Comedian Corey Holcomb has waded in on the latest controversies surrounding Jay-Z and has dropped some nuclear bombs that have got the world talking. If Holcomb's revelations are true, then Jay-Z is in for some real trouble, especially given his involvement with convicted criminal R. Kelly. What did Corey Holcomb say? And what are the implications for Jay-Z? I think it is highly offensive for people who are smart enough to really know what's happening. There's no denying the fact that celebrities love to stay in the headlines, but doing so for the wrong reasons could hurt their career and, worse still, land them in prison. Sadly, the latter appears to be the case for hip-hop billionaire Jay-Z, as recent rumors of him have painted him in a negative light. Jay-Z himself isn't a stranger to controversy. He's been accused of a lot of things, including stabbing, cheating, greed, grooming, S.A. and R., among other crimes. But Holcomb's expose is kinda eye-opening. The comedian has accused Jay-Z and Beyonce of knowing about the Island of Sin, but did nothing to report the evil that was going on down there. He claimed that the power couple performed some of their hit songs at several concerts organized there. According to Holcomb, Jay-Z and Beyonce were far worse than R. Kelly, but got to walk away free people, while R. Kelly continued to rot in jail. Thus, he likened their inactions and silence to sacrifice. Beyonce and Jay-Z was out there where they were sacrificing kids. What? Tell me where I'm wrong! Explaining his stance, the comedian asserted that R. Kelly only committed the atrocious act, but he couldn't have done that without people who through their actions and inactions enabled the crimes. He believed that Jay-Z and Bay's silence on the issue was apparently part of an elaborate sacrifice that would enhance their fortunes. In another interview, Holcomb made reference to an alleged flight list that contained a list of stars believed to have visited the island, including Jay-Z and Beyonce. Though many stars denied ever visiting the island, many claimed that they only chartered a private jet that belonged to Jeffrey Epstein, hence the appearance of their names on the manifest. Interestingly, Jay-Z and Beyonce haven't denied ever boarding the plane or visiting the island, which appears to lend more credence to Holcomb's theory. Fans who listened to the program couldn't agree more with what the comedian said. In their opinion, anyone who knows or witnesses a crime being committed but does nothing about it is an accomplice. They continued that such persons were worse off than the ones committing the crime because they stood by and did nothing. However, some fans surmised that maybe they did nothing because they themselves were complicit in the said crimes. Thus, they feared retribution if they ever dared to speak against the horrors they were witnessing. They might not be partakers of the crime being committed, but they might have done similar or worse in the past. These fans then dug old and fairly recent accusations of Jay-Z to buttress their point. They pointed out that Jay-Z allegedly dated and groomed teenage Aaliyah and Foxy Brown. Well, Jay-Z has rarely spoken about his closeness with Aaliyah, but Dame Dash, his former business partner and best friend, has spoken extensively on the matter. According to Dame Dash, Jay-Z was interested in Aaliyah, but Aaliyah wasn't feeling the hova. Dash, who subsequently won the heart of the Princess of RNB, claimed that he never knew Jay was interested in Aaliyah until later. In an interview with that F It Up podcast, the former co-founder of Rockefeller Records said, I just threw my A game. And then, you know, I guess Jay was trying to get at her as well, and I didn't know. It got brought up and I was like, F both of y'all, but it never worked out for them, and we were both trying to get at her, and I kind of eased up, but then we ran into each other. It's a long story. Around the same time, rumors were making rounds indicating that Jay-Z was trying to groom the Try Again singer, but that rumor never stuck because it lacked merit. However, the allegation that has stuck on Jay-Z up until today is the demise of Aaliyah. According to some fans, Jay-Z sacrificed Aaliyah so Beyoncé could become a globally celebrated superstar. Before Beyoncé became Queen Bey, Aaliyah was topping the charts and headlining shows. She was christened the Princess of R&B due to her sultry singing skills and enchanting dance routines. Aaliyah's talent wasn't only limited to singing and dancing, though, as her foray into Hollywood was met with much acclaim. Her debut film, Romeo Must Die, alongside action star Jet Li, has become a cult classic. She sold millions of records and was listed as one of the most influential figures in R&B. 
While Aaliyah's star was rising, Beyonce was gradually sinking into depths of debilitating depression. Two girls quit the girl band, Destiny's Child, and the media laid the blame squarely at the feet of Beyonce. According to the narration, the girls weren't happy with how Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, was handling the group. Matthew Knowles, who happened to be the group's manager, was constantly accused of making decisions that only favored his daughter, Beyonce. The media accused him of giving about 98% of the solo parts of their songs to Beyonce, while the other girls sang in duets or choruses. They also accused him of paying Beyonce more than the other girls, even though they all put in the same amount of work. So, Franklin and Robertson's quitting Destiny's Child generated a lot of backlash for Beyonce. Initially, she developed a thick skin, but the accusations wore her down, and she spiraled into depression. Then came Jay-Z. According to Beyonce, the two met when she was 18, and they started dating when she was 19. The grapevine claimed that Jay-Z promised to help push Beyonce's career by introducing her to the Illuminati. To achieve unrivaled success, the Illuminati allegedly required that Jay and Beyonce sacrifice one icon so Beyonce could take her place. The rumors indicate that Jay-Z chose Alea because of two main reasons. One, she had spurned his advance, and two, she chose Dame Dash ahead of him. Jay-Z himself once confessed that he was a sinner, and that was how his businessmen referred to him. Jay-Z's alleged sacrifice of Alea is the reason some fans, including Corey Holcomb, I would just say that's the sinner, that's the sinner, and actually the businessman, that's, that's, what they, that's what they call him. Might think that R. Kelly is better than him. At least there's no record of R. Kelly stabbing or eliminating anyone. There are also no rumors of him selling his soul to the devil for success. So, it's easy to see why some people would like to see Jay-Z rot alongside R. Kelly in jail. When it comes to Foxy Brown, Jay-Z is alleged to have groomed her when she was in her mid-teens. Jay met Foxy somewhere in the early 90s, and the two of them sparked a musical relationship that saw them feature on each other's tracks multiple times. Before meeting Jay-Z, Foxy's talents were evident when she won a rap competition in her neighborhood in Brooklyn. In attendance were members of the music production crew Trackmasters. Impressed by her budding talent, Trackmasters invited the teenage sensation to feature on LL Cool J's 1995 song, I Shot Ya. Her performance in the song catapulted her into the limelight, causing her to be featured on the soundtrack of the movie, The Nutty Professor. And that was when she met Jay-Z. Ain't no n and Tony Braxton's You're Making Me High, which sold millions of copies and received RIAA Platinum certification. Her rap skills and undiluted flow started a bidding war between several record labels, with Jay-Z's Def Jam winning the war in 1996. Foxy released her first album, Il Nana, which sold over 120,000 copies in its first week and debuted at number 7 on the Billboard 200. Her song, I'll Be, featuring Jay-Z, was certified platinum by the RIAA, along with Get Me Home, featuring Blackstreet. A star was born, and the world began to recognize the enormous talent that Foxy Brown had. She began headlining shows and performing at top concerts, with the crowd chanting her name and gyrating to her hot tunes. Foxy Brown loved all the attention she was getting, and she smiled widely as she posed for the paparazzi on the red carpet. Foxy Brown seemed happy. She was finally living her dreams, but fans suspected that hiding beneath the smiles was a soul who was crying for freedom. They believed they could see through her and see the pain she was apparently going through. According to them, Foxy was probably suffering at the hands of Jay, but couldn't call him out or wrestle free from his shackles due to the fame she was getting. Some fans started cooking theories that suggested that Jay-Z was in an amorous relationship with Foxy. As if that wasn't enough, fans added that he was grooming the teenage girl. The rumors first started circulating when Jay-Z featured Foxy Brown on the song Ain't No as part of the soundtrack for the movie The Nutty Professor. Fans thought that the lyrics of the song were too graphic and profane for a minor to be featured in. Mind you, Foxy's age was pegged around 14 or 15 at the time of the song's recording. Thus, fans felt that if such lyrics or words could be used in the presence of a minor, it only suggested one thing. She was probably being groomed. 
However, Jay's fans thought that these were just mere lyrics to reflect the content of the film and had absolutely nothing to do with Jay-Z's real life. Moreover, they argued that the film had suggestive scenes, which only portrayed an act but didn't depict the real life of its main character, Eddie Murphy. Thus, Jay-Z critics should cut the rapper some slack. Soon, the issue was put to bed until the release of Foxy Brown's debut album, Ill Nana. Once again, the songs in the album contained obscene lyrics, but this time, Foxy Brown was 17 years old. Many people who listened to the song wondered what kind of experience a 17-year-old would have to pen these kinds of expletives. Interestingly, five of the songs on the album were co-written by Jay-Z, raising eyebrows as to the kind of relationship that existed between the two. In a recent interview with Nick Cannon on Cannon's Class, Dame Dash claimed that he knew nothing about whatever relationship existed between Foxy Brown and Jay-Z. According to the music executive, such questions should be addressed to the appropriate quarters, i.e., Jay and Foxy. Cannon asked the co-founder of the now-defunct record label, Rockefeller, if he knew about Foxy's age at the time she signed for Def Jam. Dash quickly defended and shielded himself from criticism by claiming, I wasn't paying attention to Foxy Brown. I didn't sign Foxy Brown. Stop putting me in that S. Don't beat around the bush. Say what you want to say. To which Cannon responded, I thought Fox was like 16, that's all I'm saying. Then Dame dropped the bombshell. Did I sign her? Dame responded, It seems like you got a question for Jay. Ask him. Don't ask me his questions. Y'all keep asking me, y'all wanna ask him, because he ain't here. Ask him. I ain't got S to do with that, and I don't even know nothing about that, and now I don't even wanna remember nothing about that. Nick then quipped, When I was first introduced to who Foxy was, I thought there was something between Foxy and Jay. Now, many fans thought that Dame Dash could have defended his friend and former business partner by outrightly denying the rumors that Jay was dating a minor. Instead, he deflected the question to the Empire State of Mind rapper, giving the impression that the rumors were true. Many celebrities criticized Dash for his answer, chief of whom was 50 Cent, who called Dash a sucker on Twitter, along with a video from the interview where Dash made those comments. Another industry player who co-signed 50's comments was rapper and DJ Funk Flex. He wrote, Two grown men giggling like bees concerned about Jay-Z and who H is touching, in reference to Dame and Nick. He continued, Nick always commenting on a man's chick but can't keep his chick. Y'all all an effing disgrace from my era. However, the most high-profile confirmation of the relationship between Jay and Foxy came from Nas in his 2001 diss song to Jay-Z. Nas and Jay-Z had a bit of back and forth in the early 2000s, with the hip-hop legends trading diss songs. One of the lines in the song, Ether, a diss track Taylor made for Jay-Z, read, Foxy got you hot cause you put your face in her pee. What you think, you getting girls because of your looks? Seemingly referring to the Young Forever rapper. Many fans saw this as a public confirmation of their long-held suspicion that Jay-Z had an amorous affair with Foxy when she was a minor. They argued that Nas was in the same space as Jay-Z and were even industry friends before the beef started. Thus, he might have seen Jay or, better still, have evidence that the Rolling in the Deep rapper groomed the young Foxy Brown. Many concluded that if the line in Nas's rap were true about Jay, then he was probably far worse than R. Kelly. However, fans of Jay-Z defended their idol, stating that it was a beef song and, like any beef song, could contain unsubstantiated allegations and accusations. They continued that rap songs were usually full of exaggerations and imaginary tales. Thus, they should be treated with a pinch of salt. Lastly, they argued that Nas was just riding on the rumor of the day and didn't have any evidence to support his baseless claim. When everyone thought that Nas's reconciliation with Jay-Z in 2005 would put the rumor to bed once and for all, talk show host Wendy Williams stoked the old flames in 2021. During one of the segments, Wendy insinuated that Jay-Z did have an affair with Foxy, even before he met Beyoncé. To avoid legal trouble, the talk show host used the word allegedly, but later claimed that it was public knowledge. She said, I remember, right, when Foxy and Jay-Z had I'll Be, Jay-Z was standing in the corner, wringing his hands talking about, okay, what do I do next? All that. 
This was allegedly a romantic thing. It's all right. I'll say alleged. You know we know. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. Allegedly. Even some hardcore Jay-Z fans began questioning the moral fortitude of their beloved star. According to them, if the rumor surrounding Jay's affair with Foxy came from one or two people, they would let it slide, but from about four people, with some of them being celebrities, then Jay-Z could really be guilty of the accusations. Some started comparing him to R. Kelly, agreeing that he was probably worse than the convicted child S.T. They questioned why Jay-Z would have collaborations with R. Kelly, knowing full well that he was into grooming young girls, sleeping with them without their consent, and transporting them to other men. Some fans expressed their outrage over the issue, with many of them calling for the head of Jay-Z. One such was Dame Dash, who wondered why Jay would do two projects with R. Kelly, even when it became public that the disgraced R&B star married Alea when she was just 15. He asserted that he didn't want any money from their collaborations and that his share should be donated to Alea's foundation. I just couldn't believe Jay did a project with R. Kelly when knowing that he'd RD my girl, Aaliyah. I was like, just don't put my name on that. I don't want no money from that. If it is, put it to Aaliyah Foundation. Before their feud that began in 2004, Jay-Z and R. Kelly were industry friends and had done a couple of projects together at the height of R. Kelly's trials for Child ST and other related crimes. Many celebrities called R. Kelly out for his predatory behavior and distanced themselves from the self-acclaimed Pied Piper of R&B, but not Jay-Z nor Beyonce. The pair refused to criticize R. Kelly both privately and publicly, leading to speculations that they were probably in on his crimes the whole time. Fans tried defending their star, claiming that he knew nothing about R. Kelly's crimes. They insisted that they were just industry colleagues who only met for business and had nothing to do with each other's private lives. However, that argument was shattered in 2002 when Nas said in an interview with Wendy Williams that he and Jay-Z knew about what was going on with R. Kelly. However, Nas distanced himself from R. Kelly and called out Jay-Z for feigning ignorance of Kelly's crimes. He stated, I could have shown the R. Kelly video that everybody's talking about and made fun of it and show pictures of Jay hanging out. You can't tell me Jay didn't see a 14-year-old girl come into the studio and sit on R. Kelly's lap. You gonna tell me he didn't see no 14-year-old girl come into the vicinity? Jay-Z and R. Kelly continued to work together and even sang his praises in 2002 when he was first accused of sleeping with an alleged minor. When you get two people like this coming together, it sends a signal out. It's bigger than music. It's like Martin and Malcolm coming together, Jay-Z said of their Best of Both Worlds album, as reported by the Chicago Tribune. Around the same time, two anonymous women came forward to accuse the RNB star of sleeping with them against their will when they were underage. The police started investigations into the independent cases, but soon dropped their investigations because the women refused to give further evidence. After the two women, R. Kelly was indicted for possessing videos of unclad minors, but Jay-Z still stuck by his buddy. I got love for the dude, Jay-Z said when he first heard of the news of Kelly's indictment. If he's guilty, I just hope and pray that he gets help. If he's not, I wish everybody embraces him. After Kelly's release, Jay-Z kept working with him when other stars shunned his company due to his past deeds. Celebrities like Dame Dash even called him out for his collaboration with Kelly, claiming that he even stopped talking to Jay because he felt that the rapper should have stopped working with Kelly by now. The two went on to release their joint album, Unfinished Business, in 2014 and embarked on a tour that same year. Many pundits believed that the only reason Jay was still hanging around Kelly was because of the money. According to a spokesperson from Jay-Z's camp, their first two shows in Chicago alone would gross somewhere in the region of $1.6 million. Many fans then accused Jay of putting money ahead of his image and brand, while others thought that he was also guilty of R. Kelly's crimes. Many called on him to cancel the tour with R. Kelly to save his image and to show solidarity with the affected victims, but Jay-Z wouldn't budge. Eventually, the tour came to an abrupt end, but not because Jay-Z finally heeded the fans' call to boycott it, but because the pair had a misunderstanding. The end of the tour marked a period of feud between the two, as they traded diss tracks. 
According to deep sources, the feud began earlier during the tour, as the two camps were unsatisfied with the other's behavior and work ethics. Both camps started throwing accusations at each other backstage, and things came to a head when one person from Jay-Z's camp pepper sprayed Kelly in the face. Before the pepper spray incident, Kelly had run backstage, insisting that he saw someone wielding a gun in the audience. He only agreed to return to the stage after it was established that no one was wielding a gun and that all was safe. On his way up the stage, Kelly got pepper spray in his eyes from Jay-Z's entourage, which led to an altercation between both camps. Ultimately, the show was canceled, and the two artists went their separate ways. Still, Jay-Z refused to call Kelly out for his crimes against women and children, even in the face of glaring evidence, with victims pouring out in drones. R. Kelly's troubles began as far back as 1991, when he first met Aaliyah when she was only 12 years old. Aaliyah was introduced by her uncle Barry Hankerson, and R. Kelly couldn't hold back his admiration for the girl. He is quoted as saying, I saw her as a star the minute I heard her sing and dance. According to fans, that statement heralded the dawn of Aaliyah's suffering at the hands of the R&B singer. A year after his first contact with Aaliyah, rumors started flying around that R. Kelly was grooming the 13-year-old Aaliyah. During one of his trials, a witness testified against Kelly, claiming the R&B star actually had carnal knowledge of Aaliyah when she was around 14. In 1994, R. Kelly produced Aaliyah's first album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, which lent credence to the rumors that the two were romantically involved. Things took a turn for the worse when Vibe magazine published a marriage certificate proving that R. Kelly and the 15-year-old Aaliyah were married. This revelation confirmed what everyone knew. Kelly was grooming Aaliyah. According to the court records, Aaliyah had lied that she was 18 at the time and thus needed no parental consent to marry Kelly. To save their rising star from disgrace and humiliation, Aaliyah's family asked the courts to annul the marriage and declare it null and void. Two years later, the singer herself asked the courts to expunge the marriage from their records. Sadly, Aaliyah wasn't the only victim in R. Kelly's web of crimes against minors. In a 2002 search of her home, investigators discovered several images of a minor dressed in a towel and scanty clothes. In 2003, he was once again arrested for the same charges, but this time in a different county. However, the charges were soon dropped, as the investigators didn't obtain probable warrants for the search they conducted. Interestingly, the alleged victim refused to testify at the R&B star's trial, and the jury also found Kelly not guilty on all 14 counts of possessing videos and images of naked minors. And all this while Jay-Z and Beyonce didn't think it relevant to call out the R&B star and distance themselves from him. R. Kelly walked a free man, much to the annoyance of his victims and the disappointment of fans. However, R. Kelly's Waterloo moment came in 2019, when several women accused him of S.A. in a six-part docu-series titled Surviving R. Kelly. This series brought to light the evil that the singer perpetrated on girls and women. The fallout from the series led to several indictments against the singer, which saw him get 20 years in jail for his crimes. Many were finally happy that justice was served and that the smooth singing criminal was going to pay for his crimes. However, many still felt that Jay-Z should also be in there too for being complicit in all of this. After all, as Nas said, it is impossible to be around R. Kelly for all this time without knowing what he was up to. And this brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.